In this video, we're going to be looking at thermodynamics and more specifically about uh, the first law of thermodynamics as well as some basics that we're going to need. Like this name, my coffee's too hot and now it's too cold. All right, let's talk about, first of all, before we go any further, I think it's good to know what we mean by closed versus isolated system. A closed system, which is the one we're going to be using the most, is when, okay, it's a system where there's no mass transfer in or out, but there is energy that can be transferred. In other words, there is heat here. So there is some sort of heat transfer. An isolated system, by contrast, has no mass transfer in or out and also no energy transferred. Okay, so I think uh, this is actually important here. So this one here. But this one here especially is the one we're going to use. So let's look at this then. The first law of thermodynamics applies to a closed system. Now remember, that's, oh yeah, that's the one with no mass transfer, but there is energy transfer. So that hopefully makes sense why we have this equation then. So we're going to say this equation, it's on your data booklet, but it goes Q equals delta U plus W. So what does this mean? Let's look at this right here. At least this is the heat that's been transferred. Okay, so heat, remember, is in joules. It's going to be the change in internal energy, so that'll also be in joules plus the work done, which is also in joules. So can you see then, everything's in joules, right? You got joules equals joules plus joules, so that's good. And basically it just explains here how internal energy relates to the transfer of energy as heat or work. So I think this is just the, you know, that's just what happens with it, right? This sort of explains the equation. So because in this equation right here we have a work done, let's investigate that one further. So that's why we have this slide right here. So work done by or to a closed system. We're going to have this, that work equals P times delta V. So this is going to be the actually really, really important one. We're going to use this quite a bit, actually. So let's look at what all these mean. Now work done, of course, is in joules. We're going to investigate that further. Pressure is in pascals. And delta V is a change in volume, so that must be in meters cubed. Now, what does this really mean? Remember that this right here, um, if you multiply, if you have a graph of P versus V, then multiplying P times V is going to be the area under the curve. That's the, going to be the, the really important piece here. So if you have a PV diagram, which is very common, remember this is a closed system, just like we were talking about before, right, with systems that are open or closed. So again, for a closed system, um, if we have a graph, now this could be any kind of shape, but let's just say it goes like uh, this, let's just say, like that direction. Uh, versus if we go maybe like this. Let's assume this is like uh, where we keep pressure constant and the volume expands or the volume you know, uh, contracts, for example. Something like this right here, we're going to say that the work is going to be positive here, the work done here. We're going to say the work done is going to be negative. So this is going to be the key uh, piece here. This is these clausius conventions. These are basically like, hey, how are we going to define things? Okay, this is going to be really important. But just so you know, if the arrow goes to the right, work is positive. Okay, this is the key thing right here. So if you go to the right, work is positive. If you go to the left, work is negative. It doesn't have to be exactly negative uh, left. It could be like, you know, if it was a PV graph like this right here, and it, it went like this instead. Well, just look though, does it go to the right? Oh, then work done by the system is positive. So we're going to need to know this really, really well. Okay, so this right here, this is key. And this right here is key here. So let's actually look at these then and decide uh, on what these are. So the heat from a system to its surroundings, that must be Q. And we're going to say Q is going to be positive for this. This is one of the conventions of Clausius here. As well, uh, with the internal energy, so this is going to be delta U. If that's positive, then we're going to say that the internal energy of the system increases. And here, uh, just like I was defining here, so if work is positive, what does that mean? That means a system, so this like pump or whatever you're looking at, it does work on the surroundings. And by contrast, if the work is negative, then the system has work done on it by the surroundings. Or you could say the surroundings do work on the system. So this, I think, is, is the key piece right here, just to understand and put everything together. We're gonna need these. These are the real, these are the absolute basics of what we need. Okay, so again, work is pressure times volume, a change in volume at least, and we have Q equals delta U plus W. So let's go in and investigate then the change in internal energy. So just how, you know, the first uh, law had a work term, but it also has a delta U term. So let's look at this right here. Now, 
um, we had an equation before for internal energy. Now we just need a change in internal energy. That's all. So delta u, well, it's going to be 3 halves times n times r times delta t. Because it's a change in internal energy, it must be related to a change in temperature. And we have another version of it, of course, that goes delta u equals, uh, well, 3 halves, still the same number there. Maybe I'll make a nicer 3 here. So 3 halves times capital N times Kb, this Boltzmann's constant, again, times delta t. So this right here is the key that we needed again. Remember, this right here, you can use this version or this version, depending on what you were given. And don't forget, remember, that's because nr, this middle term, this constant of proportionality here, is the same thing as n times kb. So basically, use whichever one you're given. There you go. And let's just not forget about all the units just to make sure. So this is change in internal energy, must be in joules. This right here is a change in temperature, must be in Kelvin. Number of moles, gas constant, number of molecules, no units there, and the Boltzmann's constant. Now we're ready. So let's look at an example. Let's put this all into context. So in this example, we have a gas that undergoes an isovolumetric change. That means the volume doesn't change, goes from A to B. And we know at A, we know the pressure, we know the volume, and we know the temperature. And we're told at B, the temperature is this. So you notice it goes down in temperature from A to B. And the question is asking, what's the thermal energy removed from the gas when going from A to B? First of all, what does removed mean? It means we're expecting a negative answer. So just so we know, this is going to be key here, we expect some answer that's negative. Well, if we're talking about thermal energy, we're really looking for Q. Okay, so we want, we want to know Q. This is what we're looking for, okay? We need to know Q. So we can state then that the, because of the first law, let's just put it down like this, just so it's clear here. What am I doing? I'm saying then that, hey, the heat, so the thermal energy removed, is gonna be equal to the change in internal energy plus the work done by or on the system. I'm gonna use this. All right. Let's keep going then. What do we know? Do we know anything here? Yes. I know the work done is actually going to be zero. Look, the area under this curve right here, it's infinitely thin, isn't it? Does that make sense then that this right here is going to be zero? So that's actually interesting. We don't have to worry about if it's positive or negative. Work is actually zero. Well, because of that then, I know that the thermal energy removed Q is just going to be the change in internal energy because the work done was zero. So that was actually kind of nice. I just have this. So if I'm looking for this then, all right, my answer then is basically just delta U, this internal energy. Well, let's just write down what I do know, okay? So I need to know delta U. I need to know this. And I have my equation, don't I, for this? I have that delta U, for example, equals 3 halves times N times R times delta T. But here's my problem, right? The reason why I'm kind of stuck is that I don't know this. I don't know what n is. I don't know the number of moles. So how can I do this? I mean, I do know the change in temperature. That's good. So I know that. But I, I don't know this. So what do I do? Well, here's where we can be a little bit sneaky, okay? So I'm going to maybe do this off to the side right here. Ah, but. So I'll write this down. So but. We do know that PV equals nRT, right? We knew, uh, sorry, we know that PV over T is a constant. We do know that. In fact, we know that that equals nR. You know, just from the ideal gas law, that PV over T equals nR. Oops. N times R. So because of that, then, even though I don't know N, I can still figure it out by saying PV over T. And because I know it's constant, I know that PAVATA is equal to PB, VB, over T, B. So because of that, I just need to know one place where I know everything. So I do, I have that, look. I have that when P, if I have P, A times V, A over T, A, that equals N, R. And that's the piece then that I can put into here. Aha. So that's why I put it all together. So I'm going to say so. And I'll just put it all together now. So I have delta U then. Well, remember, though, that's also Q. Remember, we just said that Q, the thermal energy removed, was equal to delta U, which is equal to 3 halves, times NR, which, remember, is PA 
VA over TA. That's the part that wasn't obvious. I didn't think that was super easy here. And what am I going to put in here? I want delta T, which is going to be the change in temperature. So it's going to be the temperature at B minus the temperature at A. So let's just put in all our numbers then. All right, so if I put in all the numbers, let's see, I've got three halves. And I'll just start putting in everything in. So PA is 4 times 10 to the 6 of so 4 million. Okay, good. Times... Uh, what else do I have then? I have VA. Well, VA is 1.5 times 10 to the minus 4. Okay. Um, all that divided by what? And then I've got TA, which is 612. Okay, and that whole thing then, I'm going to multiply that by TB, the temperature at B, which is 386, minus TA, which is 612. Phew! So let's see then. So that means Q then is going to be equal to, I think I'll just use my calculator to solve this. So I'll just go open up my trusty calculator here and just start doing everything. See, so I want to do uh, three halves here. So I'm going to put that in. So I'm going to do a pretty fraction and say three over two. All that times. So now maybe I'll put a big parenthesis here. And I'll do another fraction just to make sure everything is so clear as I can make it. Uh, yeah, I'll do a Pretty fraction, there we go. And I'll say, all right, well, what is it? It is, well, 4 times 10 to the 6. All that times 1.5 times 10 to the minus 4. All that over 612. And all that is times, when parentheses, I'll just put all in like as of here. So, so 386 minus 612. So the answer here is going to be minus 332.353. So I'll put that in here, so minus 3. 32.353. Remember, these are units of joules. So that means then, if I uh, look at this here, I can use three significant figures. I've got three here, three here, three here, three here. So let me just say then it's minus 332. That's about as far as I can get. Joules. So this is the thermal energy that's been removed. I like this example because it wasn't so simple. It wasn't just a matter of using the equation. Although you started with it, you realized, oh, W is easy. Delta U is hard because we didn't have N. We didn't have the number of moles. So we had to be a little bit sneaky about finding NR. That's okay that we were able to do it. There we go.